Hello everyone, welcome. The year started slowly for the emulation scene, but we already have a big news. The enhancement of the RPCN network on RPCS3, bringing excellent improvements for those who enjoy playing PlayStation 3 games online. If you haven't checked it out yet, you can find the video in the card. And of course, we can't forget about the Nintendo Switch. In today's video, we'll bring you the latest updates from Yuzu for Windows and Android, as well as exciting updates for Vita 3K, which is now available as an open source project. Let's check all of this out now. On February 14th, the new version of Yuzu Early Access 4136 was released, promising significant improvements in various titles, especially those that received mods to run at higher resolutions, such as The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and Tears of the Kingdom. Version Early Access 4136 introduces more efficient VRM management, allowing the emulator to utilize more VRM and address scale issues, as well as crashes during garbage cleanup in all games running with a higher resolution mod. Now, Yuzu only deletes these files from VRM when its capacity reaches 7 eighths of its capacity, resulting in a smoother experience for players. The new build also addresses crashes in the tiers of the Kingdom menu on less powerful hardware, using texture recompression and fixing some minor issues. As is standard for all Yuzu Early Access versions, version 4136 is available only to Patreon supporters. However, the new features should be implemented soon in a new version open to all users. Although I haven't had the opportunity to directly compare this new version with previous ones, mainly because I already have sufficient VRM, this update may represent a significant improvement for those who have only 2 or 4 GB of VRM. If you test it and notice an improvement in games with resolution mods, be sure to share your experience in the comments. Regarding Yuzu for Android, as mentioned in the previous video, there have been improvements in games using the Unreal Engine 4 graphics engine. In these new versions, an even greater improvement is noticed, with almost no bugs. On my device, when playing Dragon Ball Z, I still occasionally encounter issues, such as the character's health bar not being rendered correctly or some slight color changes and dust effects on the ground, but nothing that interferes with gameplay. In addition, an indicator for thermal throttling has been added, which shows an emoji in the top right corner of the screen if thermal throttling occurs on the device. I tested it on some games, including Zelda Breath of the Wild, and even while recording on a day with considerably normal temperature in Brazil, about 18 degrees Celsius, and using an external cooler registering 11 degrees Celsius, the emoji indicated that thermal throttling was not occurring during my gaming session. Another novelty for those using resolutions below the standard resolution is the ability to control the sharpness of the FSR. When selecting this upscaling filter, the ideal value is between 25% and 50%. I recommend conducting tests on your device's screen based on the internal resolution you have chosen. But before we dive into the world of the PS Vita, I'd like to ask you to leave a like so that this video reaches more people. If this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get all the latest updates firsthand. Moving away from Switch emulation and onto the PS Vita, we've had significant improvements lately in Vita 3K. Recently, the application received an internal mod that allows increasing the frame rate of games from 30 to 60, without the need for additional mods, as is done in Yuzu, for example. It's important to note that this function won't work with all games, but overall, it delivers very satisfactory performance. I tested it in games like FIFA 15, God of War 2, and Uncharted, and for this feature to work correctly, your device needs to be capable of running the game at a rate above 30 FPS. It won't miraculously speed up your game if it's already slow, in fact, it may even exacerbate the issue. Another addition that will be very useful for those with less powerful devices is the ability to lower the internal resolution below the native resolution of the PlayStation Vita. If your game is performing poorly due to GPU-related issues, or if you want a higher frame rate without worrying too much about resolution, now you can reduce your internal resolution to 50% or 75%. However, not all games will be compatible with this function, and there may be graphical glitches or even prevent the game from working correctly. For example, when using a resolution different from 100% of the Vita's default resolution in games like Uncharted, you may encounter significant graphical problems, both on Android and Windows. However, in God of War 2, I managed to succeed using this feature to increase the frame rate although I still encountered many graphical issues on my device during this game. Still, as one of the most anticipated games to enter the compatibility list, Uncharted is also playable on Windows, with performance of up to 60 FPS. Although I couldn't change the internal resolution due to the glitches mentioned earlier, 
The game runs very well on Windows, as you can see. So, if you've been waiting for the opportunity to play this game, update your Vita 3K and have fun. As for FIFA, now the game runs well on Android, and I can assure you it will be the best soccer game you can play on your device. The versions currently available on the Play Store don't even come close to this version, and mind you, I'm not even a big fan of soccer games. However, for this game, a little configuration is required. I'll leave the settings for all the games I've featured in the video description. You'll be able to play both FIFA 15 and FIFA 12 without any major issues, but I found the game to be quite demanding and had to use 75% resolution to make it acceptable on my device. God of War 2 is running full of artifacts on my device. However, as seen on other devices, the game runs very well, even better than on PlayStation 2 emulators. So, if you're having issues with Aether SX2, try using Vita 3K to play God of War 1 and 2. Another problem that has been fixed is the time it takes to install games, which has been reduced by up to 10 times. However, in my case, extracting PKG files directly into the application took about 3 hours to install the 10 gigabytes I used for this video, and I was using a USB drive with reading speeds of 500 Mbps. So, clearly, I haven't seen this improvement yet. Lastly, if you're having trouble using the latest versions of the Turnip drivers, try using the device's default driver. In some games, I've had better performance with Turnip drivers, while in others, they didn't even run using customized drivers. I hope you enjoyed the updates, and until the next video.